We're packed up already. I'm gonna call for a runner right now. Bruno, here's my list of drinks I need for tables. You got no business being here. Oh my God, did he really say that? What's up guys, it's your boy Alan again, back with another video. And today we're gonna watch another episode of Bar Rescue. But before we start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and uh, let's go check this out. Here we are. Joining John and the experts in the SUV is Bruno Samoji's ex-wife Sherry, plus his former front of the house. Ex-wife, ex-manager. I could tell this is off of a rocky start. I talked about this before, but you shouldn't be working with your loved ones, with your siblings, family members, friends. Yes, it can work out in some cases if some of the parties involved has experience, but in most of the cases where I've seen people working with people that they know, that's usually not the case. There it is, plush. Right across the street is the Keswick Theater. They have about 90 events a year. So this bar should be doing pre-event business, post-event business. Mia, what do you think? Yeah, I worked in places where it's right next to a venue, like an opera house or a symphony or even a concert. I even worked in places where we got a crowd from intermission. So not only do we have to be prepared for that, you need to capitalize on that. Make yourself known that's the spot to go to before, during, or after the show. I think when you look at that. I don't think the two exactly match up. I really think that there's- Yeah, one is very lit up. The other one looks like run-of-the-mill grocery store. It doesn't even look open. I see a very uninviting spot. I'm sure the food matches it. And the lettering's crooked on restaurant. Oh, yeah. it's actually more straight than it's been. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, even the wife is, or the former wife is like saying, this is actually an improvement since I last left. This is not good. Like if you're gonna make some kind of change, I mean, the fact that she even brought up that they've attempted to fix it, why not just go all the way and just do it right the first time rather than doing this half-ass Mickey Mousing to fix the sign. Because in many cases, it, it might look even worse because the fact that somebody even attempted to fix it did a poor job at it. In your settlement, he owes you about 65,000? Yes. And has he made any payments on that? $300. Wow. <laughs> $300. Are you kidding me? You could make that more than that in tips in one night and that's all he gave back to her? Once again, this is why you don't open a place together. It gets super messy. You have to go through all these courts and nothing ever gets accomplished. It's a lot of money. It's my future. It's my future with my daughter, Claudia. It's her college. It's any kind of security. So they share a daughter together and he's not even gonna at least give the money back for her sake? What happened to your living situation? Lost the home. I short sold the home. And it was very... So not only did she lose $65,000, she also lost the home. And not only did she lose the home, she was forced to sell it at a loss. And this husband is so messed up to her, I'm surprised she wants to help him out. I mean, maybe it's because she wants her money back. So I'll put cameras in there. Well, I haven't been in there in a long time, but I've seen some pictures. Look at how dirty it looks, even from here. That's disgusting, honestly. What is that, gum? Are you kidding me? This isn't even like gum that's under the table where you can't even see it. This is like right behind the seat. Like, how do you not miss this? And it's not even that hard to get rid of. I've worked in places where part of the opening task for a server is to flip over all the tables and scrape off the gum. It's super disgusting, but you know, it's something that has to be done. And this is clearly visible and there's no excuse to miss this. Everything is torn. Look at the bar top chips. You can see them it from here. It just has no appeal. It looks like a dirty strip bar. So there's Bruno. Why is he cooking? We had a full... Yeah, why is he cooking? Does he have any cooking experience? Time chef and there was a big falling out and we couldn't afford another chef. Let me order up, yach. <sighs> so you can't afford a chef. So you decide to cook on your own? So who's watching the floor? Who's doing the, the office the admin stuff? The counting? And this kitchen is pretty big. You can't even find a few culinary students that are willing to work for a lower pay or something temporary like that. But you can't just jump in the kitchen not knowing how to cook, especially because you have to be aware of health codes, things like proper storage, you know, food temperatures, like especially for like chicken or pork. Like these are things that you can't just jump behind the kitchen without any knowledge and just take over because you don't, you're understaffed. Like you don't want to get anyone sick. I've been drinking. I've been drinking. Who's that, sure? Peanut. That's, that's our stripper pole. I wouldn't touch it if I were you. <laughs> Who 
whose idea is that? Isn't this supposed to be a restaurant and you have this place right across the street from a theater? Think about what kind of crowds the theater attracts. If they come in here, and you have that around, like you think they want to stay there? You think that they're going to recommend their friends to come here, you know, before or after the show? There's Chris. She's a big girl. She can handle a big one. Oh, I came out really wrong. I apologize. It pisses a lot of people off. Maybe you shouldn't be working in a bar. It's the most magical place on the planet. Earth. It's hot. That's a server? Is he on something? Like, is he drunk already? Why is he doing this? He probably should have been in the kitchen than ever being out on the floor. Why is he wiping that down? Do people actually use it? <laughs> oh, shots for the bartender. Peanuts drinking. For now. Allows that. They're already drinking. There's nobody here. It's this is early in the night. Is he just drinking because he's bored? He always has. I have never worked behind a bar where I was allowed exactly. to drink. He stays in the kitchen all night long, and that's what happened. The owner just drink a beer behind the kitchen too. Is everyone drinking? Who's supposed to be the authority here? So I reached out to about 200 people. And they're in line outside of the bar right now. Oh my god, are you kidding? I'm sitting. And he's leaving the kitchen to take a shot in front of the customers in his uniform? Like, this is not a good look when you have bar staff and kitchen just drinking this out of sheer boredom. <laughs> oh, it is going to get so ugly now. I knew it was going to hit the fan. I knew it. Everybody started coming in and then we got hit. Then you work right across a theater. Like, how. Are none of the people anticipating something like this? I know that they haven't done their best in trying to attract this crowd. This can happen at any moment. Like if somebody next to you, whether or not you get a big portion of them coming in and sitting at your bar, at least have some kind of anticipation that it might happen one day. I have no idea what's going on right now. I have no idea what I'm doing. There's people still walking yes, inside. There is. I don't know. This bar is now four. I mean, this place is big enough to hold this amount of people. Like, they should be prepared to be able to serve and accommodate a crowd this big. Because that's the goal in the end. And right now, they're fully staffed and they're stuck. It's a lot of chaos all at once. Off you from the streets of Glenside. Oh, no. Man, people are... <laughs> Some of these people are already wasted. Somebody needs to get her off. Look at them, they're embarrassed. They're gonna leave. They're like, what is happening? Do you realize? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is the theater crowd. You have a stripper pole like that, it's gonna invite this kind of activity, which is definitely gonna scare away the crowd that you're trying to attract. What's the point of this pole? Is it supposed to, does it bring in money? Give me a break. That young lady just got you a free drink. Look at this. Um, 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 what am I doing? Please don't tell me that. They don't have a POS system. This is all written down on paper, and there's a few credit cards there, and then an old school cash register. Like, how are they communicating the food orders to the kitchen? Are they really writing things down? I, I know this is the old way of doing things, but on this day and age, I can't imagine any place, especially a place with a bar this big and a kitchen that big, to be able to run without a, a proper POS system. These food orders are piling up and you, you also, when you have things that are handwritten, you also get to a point where, you know, when the servers start panicking, the handwritings start to become illegible. And that creates like another layer of problems. There's no systems here. It's been a manual handwritten system since the minute we opened. It's such a nightmare. It's completely disorganized. That, all those tickets just lying around there, open tabs. I would not be surprised if some of those tabs, there's no paper clips holding the card to the tab together. Like, this looks like these tabs are gonna get mixed up together. There's a huge liability here. Seriously, yeah? Yo, chill the out, for real. Chill the out. I need another drink. Let me Please don't talk to your guests like that. This is what happens when you're drunk and you can't control your emotions, especially when they're trying to ask you for drinks and you're a little backed up. There are far more professional approaches to this. Treat a guest like that. It does not matter if you're no, busy. It doesn't. Excuse me, coming through. Excuse me. Oh, God, you people. And you have the only person in the kitchen drinking too. <laughs> which is gonna slow him down, risk getting hurt. Because remember, you're dealing with knives and fire, hot oil. This is not good. Everyone here is drunk. Look at the customers. Lots of people waiting. 
It's a mess. They're not that busy. Like, that's the thing. Like, they're probably just never dealt with this amount of people before and they're just overwhelmed probably a little tipsy probably a little drunk and they just they're all flustered it might be a little rough but this is definitely not impossible to handle customer is reaching over the bar and helping herself oh my god you can't let your customers grab anything behind the bar and nobody seems to notice all right i'm taking five minutes yeah now Five minutes over what? You just, you were dancing and stuff earlier. You could have been preparing or something. What are you gonna do in five minutes? This is not the time to take a break. Yeah. Now let's see if Bruno helps. He's holding on the oh, pole. Get the pole. He's touching the pole. Why is he touching the pole? He saw the girl using it earlier. All right, I gotta make some food. Yeah. I haven't seen him wash his hand once. So he just touched that, he just leaned against that surfer pole that the girl just used and now he's making a salad with his bare hands and they haven't even seen him wash his hands. This is disgusting. Why did he go in front of the house and, oh my god, this is why you need to hire professional kitchen staff. I'm to a point where I'm almost OCD when I grab dirty glasses or plates, I immediately wash my hands. It's become instinct to me. So when you have people with no experience, they forget these things, these cues that to remind yourself to wash your hands when you touch something that could be potentially dirty, cross-contamination. You grab the plate, you grab the salad with your hands, and earlier you touch the stripper pole, and he probably doesn't even remember it. I don't even believe this. He's not even using his gloves. This dish should also have the essence of a stripper pole. Oh, no, he put his hand Dude, on... He's touching everything with his bare hands and he hasn't even washed his hands once. Half of the food. Oh, jeez. That's disgusting. Order up, Yachts. That's their bell? It's against something. How can you hear it? And you have to get a stick to hit it? Is this real? Like, how expensive it is to get a proper bell? I mean, yeah, I've seen those kind of bells before, but they usually have, like, a string or something on the bottom, but that thing looks super dilapidated. Hitting with a stick, that's just another layer, another obstacle that you have to you, overcome just to ring a bell to get the food run. Every time he touches something, he's contaminating something else. After these orders, I might kill the kitchen. They just stopped taking orders. America, that's the way they do it here. He's facing total economic ruin, and he's drinking a beer. He's drinking another... Uh, oh my god. Your business is failing. This is not the right time to panic and drink, alright? And friggin' wash your hands! He'll remember to grab the beer, but he won't remember to wash his hands? Claudia, a 10-year-old who's counting on her father to come through, and he's yet to do it. Oh boy. Sheriff. And now he's taking a shot. This is insane. His business failing, like, this is not gonna help. Seriously? She has no business being here. So what are your ex-wife? Turn around and get the f out. How do you think he's running this place? Dude, you owe her money. I mean, you guys have a 10-year-old together whose life depends on this place to succeed. She's not here to, you know, shove this in your face. She's only here for her and her daughter. That's it. Hard time because you couldn't make change. Are you kidding well, me? Well, you know what? She's sitting here right now Great. actually trying to help you. No, she's not trying to help me. She's trying to accuse me like she always does. Bull she said a lot of bull Accuse you? We got stuff. We just saw a lot of bad stuff on camera. I think you're so used to dicks and bars that you forget what it's like to work place every day. Come on, I've owned more than you'll I, ever I'm own. I'm sure you have. But I'm saying, you've been doing this for so long, maybe you forget how hard it is to the do it on a daily basis. The difference is I... Yeah, it is hard to run a bar in a kitchen. That's why you don't do it drunk. And these employees need to understand what's on the line. Come on out, everybody. Let's talk. What's your name? Ah, uh, Chris. Hi, Chris. How long have you been here? Ten years. Ten years? Ten years? That's insane to be in the same place for ten years. Seeing this kind of mess, I would have left for something better. What do you do? Anything Bernie needs me to do, whether it be bar backing, bartending, running errands, doing the kitchen, doing the floor, being at the door. God, you do everything. Hi, I'm Dina. Why isn't he a manager if he's doing everything and he's been for 10 years and he probably knows his way around the place. And probably knows what's wrong with it too and what can be improved. Chris, if you own this bar, what would you do? I'd fire all of us. Yeah, 
because they're clearly just using this place as a playground and he, he's been here for 10 years and he hasn't left so he must have some kind of emotional connection to this place and he's worked every single position of this place so yeah he should have been a manager and yeah rehiring a completely new staff that is an option to consider the bar is going to be very busy so you have to provide quick service get in the habit of putting everything back down in the same place it will always be there when you're reaching for it so i said this once said it again i don't consider drinks finished until all the tools are cleaned and back to where they are and this is exactly why when you have to deal with volume and you think you're saving a few seconds by leaving some shakers in a sink. Guess what? The next customers come in and you order some drinks. Now you got no tools. Now you're delayed. You're looking around. It's dark. You don't know where the tools are. It's like, it's a mess. Like, so if you're working behind the bar and you're making drinks, no matter how busy you get, clean the tools and put them back where they are. So you're ready for the next order of drinks. I've been doing this for two and a half years and I can run circles around everybody. Every second counts behind the bar. Just keep going. We've got a stuck shaker. Oh, don't. <laughs> don't bang the cocktail shakers against the bar. One, it'll damage the bar. Two, he's using glass on tin. I usually prefer tin on tin, like a smaller tin on a bigger tin. Like I've seen cocktail shakers break and now you have broken glass that falls on top of the ice and now you gotta burn the ice. It's a disaster. So yeah, do not ever hit the cocktail shakers against the bar, right? Just calm down, slap it on the side, just enough to let some air in and break the vacuum and you're good to go. But if they can execute drinks in a timely fashion and engage their customers, I'll be happy. My hands are don't what is he reaching for? You know, you're picking up something deep. Just pick it up and just tilt it. Like, work smarter. This is a bad idea. Sherry, your purpose is to reinstill the old things that we used to do, a little detailing, make people feel welcome. Plain and simple, this is a bad idea. I'm already objecting to this. This is not going to work for me. I think it's a Why isn't it going to work? Like, you even admitted that things were going well when she was running the place. So why not just pay attention to what she's doing? And even if she's not going to be here after this at least write down notes because even you're not denying that she was a good gm so just pay attention and write down notes and stress you where it's not hurting. needed you are hurting the business i'm not hurting the business i came into tonight prepared to run the front of the house i used to run the front of the house by myself on point you've been doing a great the job bar, the last year so he runs the front of the house Oh, it's obviously not working. Watch the, watch the back of the house. So what, you want everybody to leave? No, you. I want you to leave. How immature is this guy? She wants you to succeed. Why would she not want you to succeed? You guys have a daughter together, 10 years old. Why do you think she's trying to sabotage you? Is this like an ego thing? For the stress test tonight, I invited the theater crowd. They only have one hour to eat and drink before they go to the show. And I want Bruno to run it. That's the thing about the theater crowd, is that you have to be aware of the time constraint. How much do they gonna bum rush you and every single person needs to leave food? I worked at this one place that was right next to um, the opera and we had this fried chicken dish. It was amazing, but it took 20 minutes. And um, as delicious as it was, you know, some of the guests didn't get it in time. And you know, when you want everything to be delicious, but when you're right next to a venue like that, you need to be conscious on the timing, you know. You have to get ready for the rush and 30 to 60 minutes, they're all gone. When everyone goes to the show and it becomes slow again, that's when the bar and the kitchen preps and gets ready for the next rush. I've been here, coming here for about five years. Did yeah. Sherry's departure change things three years ago? Sad to see her go. I mean, the, the staff loves her. Hi, Robbie. How are you, honey? Nice to see you. Wow, she like knows a lot of these people. And yeah, and they look genuinely happy that she's here tonight. Hey, you guys, you order in yet? This is a bad idea. Why, why are you out of the kitchen? Just focus on the kitchen. Don't worry about your ex-wife. Just keep your focus in the kitchen. We're packed up already. I'm gonna call for a runner right now. Bruno, here's my list of drinks I need for tables. You got no business being here. Oh my God. Did he really say that? 
this is gonna be a disaster. Like, why would you say that? Like, she's busting her ass right now. Does she look like she cares about the divorce? No, she only cares about the guest experience and the success of your restaurant. Uh, what are we doing? You can't function if you've got stuff everywhere. Yeah. How we doing? This little line of food tickets and drink tickets. This is just... Oh my God, that system is giving me a anxiety attack. Not even a Rolodex to organize the cards. Just lying these credit cards and the tickets like that. What if somebody just slips and just knocks all those... Yeah, I can't imagine a system like that working like when it gets busy. Chris, you kick ass, man. <laughs> I'm gonna f smile for the first time in five years, probably. Chris is doing an amazing job, but there's a lot of disorganization in the front of the house, and I don't want that to flow back here. Anybody order the RCDs? I don't know. I knew that was exactly going to happen. <laughs> the kitchen's doing a good job, but the food is not getting run to the right place because they're just auctioning everything. They're not looking at the tickets to see where it goes. And this can all be fixed if they just had a proper POS system. Do not auction your food, all right? Look at the ticket, see where it goes, and you can just take it out immediately so you can go back to the expo station and get ready to run even more food. I don't know what's going on. I don't know where this goes. Okay, so we don't know where it's going. So nobody knows where it goes, not even the bartenders. You have all this food coming out in time. It's just floating in purgatory around the place. Bartenders, managers trying to figure out where the food goes and when or if even gets to the table, it's going to be cold already. You, you got to give me a second. No, I don't have to give you shit. I'm going to give you the Sarancini so you can bring it out, pal. Who doesn't have a drink still? Come on, it's a half hour they don't have drinks. We're not going to make... Jeez. If they're delayed on drinks in 30 minutes, I can't even imagine how late the food can come out. I mean, the food's being made in time, but nobody knows where to run it to. Order in, one RC, one salmon. All right. I can't even read this. It's like hieroglyphics here. What, what do we got going on here? Like I said, like, you don't have a POS. Eventually, you know, these handwritten tickets, when the servers get stifled, when it gets busy, the handwriting is going to get even more sloppier and you don't even know what food items written on it and many times the server themselves can't even recognize their own handwriting when it gets that messy. I got food dying in the window, let's go! We haven't had anyone come over to us and it looks like we're going to be late for our show down at the theater. Still waiting. And they're about to go to the show and nobody even greeted them. This is the importance of Nonverbal communication. You see a table with no waters, no coasters, that means that nobody has talked to them yet. All right. I need a runner right now! I got the first table, they dropped, I dropped the check already. I got food dying in the window, come on! All right, all right, what am I doing? Why is the owner behind the bar, right? His job is to run the food. Bar has enough people behind there, like, you, they don't need your help. Let's go! These two, table five, gone. All right, and then send someone else back here. Table five. Thank you. You guys be coming out? Of course, the wife's the one that took over. <laughs> Unsurprisingly. We sat there for about 45 minutes. We never even put in an order. We were going to be late, so we had to just leave. Oh my god, they didn't even get a drink order in. Nobody even greeted them. What are you thinking for cocktails? I know that we have to keep it simple. Two, three ingredients per cocktail because I don't think these bartenders can handle the volume. The three drinks was an Old Fashioned, Collins, and a Greyhound. Two of them are built, one was shaken. Like, how much more simpler can you get? Maybe along the lines of the post-theater crowd and a dessert drink or a coffee drink. I love it. Bruno has a lot of pride in his family heritage. Yeah, dessert is uh, pretty important because um, lots of people are like, why do you want to have dessert? It's only $6. Like, how much money can you make off of a $6 chocolate cake? People remember the last thing that they had. So if you can make some bomb desserts, guess what? They're, they're going to come back. They're going to have the full course and the dessert. So you got to think of it that way. So yeah, having a dessert drinks is the same thing. Like, yeah, they do take a lot longer to make, but you got to think about this, that people are going to order things before they order the dessert or the dessert drink. There's going to be revenue that leads up to that. So, you guys ready to see it? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Beautiful. 
They were going, yeah, they were talking about going for like not an Italian restaurant, but an Italian bar for quick bites. It looks really welcoming and the bright colors is way less depressing than those dark colors that they had earlier. It's clean, it's got great lines. It's, it's just beautiful. Wow, look at how this is. <laughs> no more stripper pole. Oh. You wanna dance? It's such a change from plush. There's no more stripper pole, which is great. So I don't have to. Yeah, first of all, why was there a stripper pole in a restaurant? That was not making any sense in the first place. POS system. We have two systems behind the bar and then a third one just for servers. Drinks print up here. Food prints up where, Chris? In the kitchen. Remember all those tabs? Now we that was so messy. POS system is the way to go. I said this before, but I can't imagine any high volume bar or restaurant running without one these days. Hey, if you enjoyed that, don't forget to check out these other videos as well. And please leave on the comment section on what videos I should react to next. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one.